every entrepreneur has a story. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, where each episode, your host, Brian Carney, will share a drink with a successful business owner and have them discuss their unique journey, gaining insight on what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the different ways to get there. Brian isn't just a beer nerd. He's also the co-founder of Rivers Edge Advisors, a financial planning firm headquartered in Delaware, specializing in working with business owners. It's time to pour yourself a drink and enjoy a happy half hour with an entrepreneur. My guest today is Don Blue. Don and his brother, Bob, and sister, Amy, own a very successful plant nursery in Centerton, New Jersey. Centerton is a third generation family business that was started in 1974 by Don's grandparents, Ray and Marlene. The business is firmly committed to working exclusively with privately owned independent garden centers throughout North America. When the business originally started, there were fewer than 12 greenhouses and they only grew two different types of plants. Now, the business grows over 1,600 different plants and sells them to 900 unique dealers in 32 states. For our conversation, I'm going to be drinking a beer from one of my favorite breweries, Stone Brewing in San Diego, California. FML, which stands for Fear Movie Lions, is an unfiltered double IPA that's on the stronger side with an ABV of 8.5%. Although Don does enjoy beer, he loves bourbon, and he's going to be drinking a 10-year-old whistle pig on the rocks. And with that, welcome, Don. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So the, the easiest place to start is tell me a little bit about your business um, and how you got started. Well, how we got started was um, a long story, but con condensed down. So my namesake, Donald McAllister, actually, start, actually, not to mess up your intro there, but Don McAllister actually started Center to Nursery. It was a hobby farm in his backyard. Oh, really? Um, uh, Don named it and started the company and everything. Um, and it was, you know, a, a couple greenhouses. And my grandfather bought the couple greenhouses and um, and and leased the land um, and bought the inventory. Huh. When Don was diagnosed with cancer and he was looking for a little bit of money to uh, leave for his wife. Interesting. So, so is that who you're named after? That's who I'm named after. That's pretty crazy. Um, yes. So he's actually the one who started, quote unquote, started Center to Nursery. Uh, yeah. But uh, obviously it's, you know, it's, it's really Ray and Marlene's uh, baby. Um, yeah. So yeah, they started the company in 1974. Um, my father got involved in 1979. Um, they, we kind of have grown it up. Um, I graduated college uh, from Del Val college in uh, 2001. Yep. And, you know, at the, at the time, um, well, you know, things were good. It was good for, you know, it was a good business for two people. And I said, well, we got to grow this and another mouth to feed on this company. And yeah, so we grew the business. And then two years later, my brother um, graduated from Penn State, degree in ag business, came back to the family business. And uh, I said, well, we got to, let's grow it again. And um, then shortly after that, my Three years after that, my sister, who couldn't find a job, came back to work here, and um, we kept telling her, you know, go find a job, go, go, <laughs> go do something, go do something. She graduated from Loyola Marymount in uh, California with a degree in uh, communications. Okay. Well, that's not a farming degree, you know. Sure. Back here for this, and um, we actually uh, she worked here for about nine months, and uh, she continued to look for jobs, but. Um, we had an opening in, uh, in our sales, uh, in-house sales department. And we asked her if she wanted to take that and she's grabbed onto that and, uh, taken the bull by the horns, uh, wrestled it to the ground, stomped on it, <laughs> threw it over her back shoulder. And her, she owns that, owns that puppy now. So. All because her older brothers tried to, to get her to go somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you go to Del Val. Your brother goes to Penn State and you both study farming. So, you know, was it a foregone conclusion that both of you were going into the family business or is it something you wanted to do? How, how did that work? 
Yeah, I was the only one. Um, I was the only one that went away to college and knew exactly like. Um, so real quick story, my um, my senior year of high school, my grandfather said uh, we're driving around the nursery here and he says to me, well, what are you going to do next year? And I said, well, I'm coming to work. I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm coming to make money. And I, you know, I probably tickled pink having, you know, making seven dollars an hour. Sure. Or yeah. Whatever, you know, it's a ton of money when you're 18. Yeah. I mean, I was like all, all gung ho. And he says, well, he said, that's good. It's good. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you to get here. That's great. And then he kind of changed his tune a little bit. And he says, well, you know, what if something happens though? I mean, the nursery business, he said, last couple of years have been pretty rough, actually. I mean, it's been, it's been tough. He said, what happens if this thing goes under? He said, then what are you going to do? He said, then the, you only, the only thing you have to go on is my word that you were a good worker or whatever. He said, I don't know. He said, I, I think I, if I were you, I'd probably just go. I'll get you into Del Val. He had connections there. Yeah. He said, I'll get you in there and <laughs> just go. Just go and get your piece of paper. Just that, That's all you got to do. Just get the piece of paper. So that's what I did. So he did me in a, uh, he did me a solid and, and he kind of, he kind of screwed me a little bit too here, but, um, and the solid was he made me go away to college, which was, a uh, uh, just a, a super experience. And, um, a wise man told me that you're going to learn more in college from the other people in college than you are from college itself, which was fair point. Th- yeah. Very good truth. Um, where he, where he screwed me a little bit is he just told me just, just go get the piece of paper, which is exactly <laughs> what I, did. I didn't do any more than that above that. But, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, um, I, I went away to come back here. Um, my brother didn't really know what he wanted to do. I think till his probably his, uh, probably his senior year, he, he, he kind of, uh, you know, came around to the fact that, you know, that that's exactly what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, my sister had no clue to, you know, that she wanted to come back and basically until, uh, until she was here. Yeah. So what's, tell me a little bit about what your role is every day at, at Centerton nursery. What do you do exactly? So, um, Honestly, or or or, or, or funnily, <laughs> I would say honestly at first. <laughs> so honestly, um, so I, uh, I'm in charge of you know running the business itself. Okay? Yeah, my heart is in production. Okay, so um, you know I I want to be growing the plants. Where where are we expanding? Uh, how do we make things faster? How do we make things better? How do we, uh, you know, do things smooth? Yeah. Um, is that sort of like the logistics behind growing? Is that kind of? No, I mean, I guess, I mean, it, it, you know, it, growing is a science, right? So you have that, it, there's a science to it. And then there's just, there's a, just a whole lot of, you know, common sense things that have to all play in to make the puzzle pieces fit. Yeah. Um, the joke of what I do every day, uh, which is, more serious than this joke is I run around all day and put out fires, which is right. pretty much what I do. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, we have lots, you know, we have lots of different production areas and we have lots of different sides of the business because we're growing plants um, all the way from herbs and vegetables up to three gallon shrubs and roses. And there's a whole lot of things in between. Um, and each one of those kind of has their area of uh, their their uh, assistant manager area that is doing that, and kind of I'm just the big picture person and yeah, making it all you know all funnel down through the same funnel. Yeah. So w- when we started, we we it, we said that Centerton Nursery started with basically two greenhouses. How many do you have now? You grow sixteen hundred plants, but do you have any idea how many how many greenhouses you have now? I, I haven't added it up in quite a while. Um, uh, I know they're I know we're building thirty five new ones right now, um, uh, somewhere in the, uh, somewhere between two and three hundred. But I do have this number down. We have three point two million square feet of growing area. Wow, that's crazy. So, it's- so when you, when you talk to your, you know, your family about, you know, the, the generations before that have run the, the business, it seems to me, and, and, and I'm inferring here, but uh, that it, the, the business really started to grow 
once you got involved. Is that what, is that fair or is that we're th- we're we're three point seven five the to- uh, times the size as when I, when I started when I graduated college. Yeah. So what do you owe? What do you owe that success to? You know, it, it, it was just uh, a lot of it was uh, being in the right place at the right time. I mean, we wanted to grow. Our customers wanted us to grow, um, and you're saying grow, n- no pun intended, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we were just, you know, a lot of it was being in the right place at the right time, putting the right people in the right places. Um, you know, I am I'm not a guy that's going to sit here and beat my own drum. I mean, it, you know, the, we have a really good team of people, and you know, they've all just come together and made it work. Uh, we're fairly we're fairly young young crew. Yeah. Um, you know, Bobby and Amy are both younger than me. Um, our operations manager is, um, uh, two years younger than I am. Um, she's in her late thirties. Um, our production manager is in his mid thirties. Um, you know, we're, we're young, we're hungry. We're, we're, we're trying to stay on the, uh, on the cutting edge of, of the, of the business or of the industry. Yeah. And we're looking for, you know, the, the we're, we're trying to stay up with the trends and do uh, what we can do. And, you know, we've just, we've got a great group of people together and everybody works together to do it. And, um, and then, well, I mean, we have legacy employees too. I mean, we have people here that, you know, that are working out in the nursery that started with my grandfather, been here 30, 40 years. Amazing. That really so, is amazing. So you, you mentioned, so you, you like the production and the growing part. Your sister Amy crushes it in the sales group. What does your brother Bob do? My brother kind of focuses on sales and marketing. Um, you know, we have um, uh, we uh, consumer based website. Um, we have uh, another website that's basically directed right to our um, right to our customers, which that doesn't mean anything in the consumer world. It's you know a lot of scientific names and things like that. Um, yeah, so, but we do. We do strive a lot to keep up our consumer website for anybody who wants to buy our our brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, you know, we have a yearly catalog and a yearly calendar, and every single plant that leaves out of here has got a big color label on it with tons of information. Um, because we 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 found that uh, the the gardeners are not as educated as they were uh, fifteen and twenty years ago. Um, you know the they, they don't know that much about plants. They don't know that much about gardening. And we try to give them as much information as we can and then back that up with a website too. Um, you know, the Googling has been, uh, especially this year with COVID, uh, Googling was up. Of uh, Google, The Googling of just gardening was up sure. you know, hundreds and hundreds of percent this year. Yeah. Uh, trying to grow their own crops. Yeah, I was going to say, so actually, since you bring up COVID, how how did the pandemic affect your business? We sat around here for the first month of it and did absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, just just trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out what's going on. We should have been shipping stuff out the door at at, at a super steady rate the month of March. And I mean, it was just dribs and drabs of somebody needs a couple of these, somebody needs a couple of this. And, you know, we were shipping out one trailer load. We should have been shipping out 30 and 40. If sure. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, to the point where you were scratching our heads, like, I don't know, do we go look for jobs or what? Like, what do we do? What do we yeah. do? Um, luckily, we um, we kind of put our nose to the grindstone and tried to figure out ways to, you know, spread the uh, spread the word of, of, of gardening and, the, the positive attributes of it. Um, we took a lot of plants and um, to all of the local hospitals here in, in Southern New Jersey. And we brought plants there to give away to the healthcare workers and um, got it on the news and in the newspapers and things like that. And, you know, basically just trying to say like, you know, plant, plants, plants don't get COVID, right? Right. Yeah. That's a safe, it's a safe thing, you know? And if you're uh, home, maybe you can do a garden. Right. Yeah. And, you know, luckily in the spring. Yeah. Luckily, I mean, after after some time and it took some time, but after some time, we were able to uh, the, our customers, our garden center customers were able to open 
based on local laws or state laws. Um, you know, and the big thing was, was the whole time that they were supposed to be closed, Lowe's and Home Depot were allowed to be open. And, Crazy. You know, they just, you know, a lot of them fought that battle and just, this is not right. How, how could they be open, but we're not allowed to be, you know? Yeah. Did, um, did you, uh, did any of your customers not survive the pandemic be, for that very reason? I don't think so. We haven't noticed any yet. That's um, good. Pretty much all of them at some point in time were allowed to open. Yeah. We had some customers, um, Midwest, especially, uh, Michigan was, Michigan was really bad. Um, Illinois, uh, they weren't, a lot of those guys weren't allowed to open until the end of May. Well, you know, most of the season's over. Um, yeah. Luckily there were enough people at that point in time that were still looking for product that I think they did okay. You know, and the yeah. ones, the ones that were able to open early did fantastic. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. The one thing I find fascinating about your business is that you're used to dealing with how revenue can be impacted by the unexpected. Obviously, no one expects a pandemic, but talk a little bit about how dependent upon your entire revenue is based upon what happens with the weather. I mean, yeah. that's about as unpredictable as it gets to try to have to manage that. That's got to be kind of crazy. Yeah. So, you know, huh, COVID had something to do with that, too. Yeah. I've never in my life heard so many of my customers say every day is a Saturday. Yeah. And that never existed in our industry. Right. The drive <laughs> centers relied on Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. Yep. And what you would, what our job was to get an order for them on Monday, Tuesday, and before Friday, get that product delivered to sell that weekend and then do it all over again. Yep. And that was our that, that was our job doing that every single week. Yep. Now this year it was not that way. If the weather was good, garden centers are out in the open. Yeah. That's if, a great place to go. If it's raining, nobody's going to the garden center. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. Um if we have, you know, a rainy Mother's Day weekend, you know, that can that could impact our business 30% for the year. That's insane. So when when you start getting around, you know, 10, 15 days out for Mother's Day weekend, you start just checking the weather every single day? Yeah, we get hives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could you not? Because yeah, literally talk about running a business on something that you literally have absolutely no control over. You can't control if it's going to be 40 and rainy in New Jersey in, in May. No, no. Now, I will tell you this. There was a big difference um, when I when I when I graduated college, 2001, we were shipping to seven states. Right. Mid-Atlantic. Good point. It. Yeah. Now, I mean, we go all the way out. Uh, our farthest to the west and south is Houston, Texas, all the way up, uh, you know, through Chicago into Milwaukee and Green Bay. Right. So when you spread out that far, your chances of bad weather you're diversifying amongst All your weather. Over the east, you know, the eastern half of the U.S. at the same time is limited. That's a great point. That is a good point. Still, still has to be a little bit stressful, though. It is. Um, so the one thing, obviously, we're talking about garden centers. You're, you guys have made the conscious decision to not really deal with the big box stores, and you're firmly dedicated to those independent garden centers. How how did you decide to really build your business around them? You know, we well we started out with independence, mm -hmm. and the we got into it, and we were approached several times by um, the big boxes, whether. You, and, and there's so many of them out there. I mean, you're, you, you know, you have, there's local, local grocery store chains that, uh, you know, that have big numbers. Um, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Kmart, um, even, even Sears had some, uh, had some stuff back in the day, but yeah, uh, you know, we just never made the jump. Um, I, I'm, thankful that we didn't and really i mean that those decisions that happened back then um w when when they really could have happened was on my dad and my grandfather you know that was on their watch really yeah um 
and we finally just coined ourselves as uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna be uh, we're gonna grow something that they can't go buy at Hello's and Home Depot. We're gonna great. Be, we're gonna be the the grower for the independent. And uh, we, in fact, we even had a slogan to think out uh, think outside of the box. <laughs> so, That's great. Uh, well, it, it you're really proven that it it shows, and, and it's a super responsible thing from a marketing perspective to niche up and really just focus on one niche and drive it home and do extremely well in that niche. Cause you can't be all things to all people. Well, it's a, it, it's a different market altogether. Yeah. Um, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot customers, I mean, they're, they're trying to, Lowe's and Home Depot, they take their product and they tell them, okay, this is what I want to pay for it. And I need you to, you know, cut off 25 cents and make it only look like you cut off 10 cents, Mm -hmm. right? Okay, we're the opposite of that. We're trying to add 10 cents to make it look like we added 25 cents. (laughs) Right, right, yeah. (laughs) But it's a completely different market, okay? uh, The quality has to be of the highest quality. The marketing has to be there. Um, You know, we just hear so many times, uh, oh, you know, I bought such and such at Lowe's Home Depot and it died. You know, well, they're, they're not, they're they're growing for the sale. They're not growing for um, that that master gardener or the gardener that really that knows exactly what they're looking for, the latest, greatest, whatever. Yeah. Um, and and they're they're trying to turn out you know just huge huge numbers, um, you know, without any real real idea of uh, you, you know how how many of this can the masses actually use. You know. Yep. Yeah, that, I, I get it. That, that makes a ton of sense. So uh, I, I like to ask this question to people. So if you could go back in time and visit yourself when you were, say, 23, 25, and, you know, a 40-something Don Blue goes back to the guy barely making it through college, <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get that piece of paper, or maybe even to like 25, what advice would you have given to yourself? If you could go back in time and do that by Google. <laughs> good. That's a good, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's uh, a pretty good one. Yeah. I don't know. It's really hard for me to answer that question. Um, I, I am uh, one of these guys who uh, I, I have this idea in my head that um, now l- let me stop. Uh, I've made mistakes. Yeah. Um, but I have very, very little regrets. Mm-hmm. Uh, every mistake I've made has, you know, changed me in some way um, and in some form. And they're all learning experiences. And yeah. I don't, think, I don't know how you go lo- go through life without some of them. I mean, the, you know, the first time we walk, we're going to fall. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a great point because, you know, the old saying is there are no failures. There's only learning experiences. And I think that really comes into play a lot when you, when you run a business for as long as you have. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and, and uh, the, the interesting thing was, is how my grandfather brought, brought me up in that too. You know, they allowed that my grand, my grandparents, my father, you know, they allowed us to make mistakes. They knew we were. They knew we were going to make a mistake. So they let you touch the hot stove. Yeah. So it goes going to as long as it didn't cost too much. (laughs) (laughs) So that's kind of that's pretty interesting. So they see you going down a road, and they know that you're making a mistake, but they didn't stop you. Yeah, of course. (laughs) You know, then, and that happened several times. Yeah, but then. What's really exciting was, you know, the times when my grandfather says, I don't think it's going to work. We tried that before and it didn't work. Well, just because it didn't work 20 years ago doesn't mean it doesn't work today. It's a good point. Okay. And I mean, now we're seeing things happen so fast. Okay. You mentioned to me uh, or uh, in your intro, yeah, we were growing two types of plants. Uh, Senator Nursery sells 1,500 different SKUs now. Yeah. 
there's no, I mean, we can't do business the same way we did 45 years ago. We can't do business the same way we did 20 years ago. You have to evolve. What we've seen happen this year, we can't do business the way we did business last year. Right. You have to evolve. You have to change. If you're not, you're dying. Yeah. That's, that's a huge, uh, it's a huge point there because I think a lot of places it, it's the old, you're either growing or you're dying. And if you're not adapting to what's going on around you, you're going to get left behind. Yeah. And if, well, you're, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're, if you're just sitting still, you're dying. Yeah, exactly. Everything else is going up around you. Well, I was going to ask about, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen the statistics about a third generation business and we've, t- we've talked about it a little bit. I, I think the, uh, the, st- the, st- the statistics for a family business surviving into the second generation is only 30%. And then yeah. only 12% of businesses are viable into the third generation. So, and, and I've talked to many people over the course of the time where you deal with two different age groups. So, you know, we're, I guess, what are we, uh, what are we, Gen Xers? You have Gen Xers dealing with, uh, with baby boomers. Right. And there's that difference there. So how were you able to, for for lack of a better way to explain it, convince your dad and your grand grandfather that they were wrong or not, or or they should do something a little bit different, even though they've done it a different way their entire lives? Uh, well, <laughs> you've met my grandfather, but for those of you who haven't, um, he's never going to. You know, he he was. He thought he was wrong once, but he was mistaken. <laughs> um, you're never, never going to prove to him that, you know, he was wrong or you were right or whatever. And that's not, and that's not the point of it. Um, you know, what would, you know, things, things would happen. We do things that, um, you, you know, you, if you're trying to back yourself out of a business at a certain point in time, you have to say, uh, let me see where this goes. Let you know. Let him. Let him. Let him run on the leash, and 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 the leash gets longer, and the leash gets longer, and the leash gets longer. You know. Yeah. Before um, the snapback happens. Yeah. Yeah. And then yep. you know, every once in a while, you'll hear this thing, you know, from the other desk here in my office from my grandfather. That uh, that's that seemed to work out okay, huh? He was like, "Yeah, it worked out fantastic." He goes, "Yeah, it worked out okay." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> The uh, the other interesting thing about a family business is, so I have two brothers. If I had to work with them every single day, I'm not sure how well that would yeah. go. You know, I love them to death, but working together every day. How How is it working with your siblings on a daily basis? So, um, you, you ever hear, you, this is a really interesting thing because you ever hear about these people and, and, I, and I'm one of them. Okay. Um, I have two kids. Uh, you have, you have uh, three, right? Yep. Um not two of them are ever alike. It's ever. true. Ever. It's okay. very true. Totally different. Um, Amy, Bobby and I are the same thing. Yeah. I, I have, uh, now I'm, you know, I'm sure that all of us could do one of the other's jobs or whatever, but you know, you, you do what you love. You do what you enjoy. Uh, you do what comes easy to you. And what do they say? You never work a day in your life. If you love what enjoy you what you do. Yeah. Um, you know, and Bobby's, you know, he has his area of the business. I have my area of the business, you know, Amy has hers. It's a big enough, I mean, it's a big enough operation. I mean, we're, you know, we have 130 employees. Right. Um, so we, we each have our area that we, that we focus on and, um, we, you know, it keeps us out of each other's hair. I mean, most, most mornings, um, uh, I'm sitting in my brother's office and, Hey, you know, what's going on? What did you know? What happened yesterday? And, you know, yeah. And, um, you know, anytime any of us are having problems, we, you know, we get together for a sounding board or, um, Hey, what do you think about this? I did this yesterday. It worked out good. And, um, you know, we, we do, we do, we do quite a bit of communication between us. Um, but, probably no more or no less than I do with my other managers in the business too. It's, yeah. It's a, everybody, everybody has their area, but we're all together here for the common goal, right? We're all, we're all here for the same thing, including all of our employees. Yeah. So that's interesting that you're able to create an environment. I believe so. Uh, the book, good to great calls it unique ability where you guys are able to concentrate on what you do the best and let other people 
delegate those responsibilities that you're not good at to other people. Well, between the three of us, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't make that happen. That right. happened organically. It's great. You know, uh, there, there was my, my, my father who, who, who was much more into the, uh, to this, to the marketing side of it and, um, how, you know, how are we going to brand our products and, and market them and things like that. That was, you know, my father was into that. My brother found that interesting. And he, when he came in, he started, you know, he, he started with that. Um, I was interested in the production side and the business side of it. And, and that, and that's what, what I started in when I, when I got here. Yeah. One of my grandfather's, one of my grandfather's realm in the company. And um, I don't think Amy, if, you know, if you went back, however many years you said you know what i mean and asked uh uh amy you know what she would do or what advice she would give uh you know i don't think she'd have any idea that she was going to be you know r- running sales and have uh, th- you know 10 different sales reps under her and um three customer service representatives in the office and yeah she never would have thought that in a million years but she's good at it right that's great that that, that all worked out so what, one of the questions I, I have, kind of an odd question, but legislation is changing drastically, even potentially at the federal level. Have you guys given any consideration to growing marijuana? I haven't even, I haven't thought about it longer than no. Okay. Um, I don't have an interest in it, for yeah. one thing. Um, I do believe that there are some people who, if they got involved at the right time, early on, can make can can make a you know decent money. I think it's fairly lucrative to start. The problem is is what we're seeing in California, Colorado, Oregon, these places. Uh, whether whether it be recreational or whether it be um, medical, yeah, going out of business because they, they just license too many growers. There's too much product, and they all of a sudden now they have these big, giant, super expensive, <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's become you know it's just become a real it's become a real problem. Um, yeah, my again, my, my big nose were I, I don't have an interest in it. Yeah, and I really don't want to do anything that's more regulated with the federal government than what we're already doing. It's a fair point. They, listen, they the pen is mightier than the sword. They can put you out of business overnight. Yeah. One law, one ruling, one one anything. Now, I don't know how much um, the listeners out there know about growing plants and things like that, but um, marijuana um, is not meant to grow this far north gotcha we need a lot of light a lot of heat a lot of big expensive greenhouses yeah if the feds ever said hey we're opening this thing up and with a pen stroke you can track you can take uh commercially grown marijuana across state lines yeah texas new mexico arizona they'll put everybody outside of those states out of business overnight. Yeah. So it's not even environmentally feasible and it's not really what you do. So there's no, no, no use in spending time on it. You can go to Texas and New Mexico and grow in a field. Yeah. I mean, that does make a ton of sense. No facility. No, I mean, nothing. Stick with what you do. That's, yeah. that's, that's where we're at. We're, we're, we're sticking with what we know. Um, I mean, that's, that's how you've been successful so far. So why change that? So two, two, one question that's sort of two ends. If you look back on your career, what would you say your lowest point is? And the flip side, what's the point that you're most proud of? Can you point to one, one time in your, in your career where you go, this was the worst? So it, it wasn't really a bad point in, in our career, but it was a it was it felt rough to me you know again um i started here back full time after i graduated college 2001 
things were pretty good for a little while there. And then, um, was it like 2008, 2009 when the, when the housing bubble burst there? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was still pretty green, but I, I was, uh, I wanted to grow my, just about that time, my, my brother and my sister were both in, but again, it was, they, and they were super green and, uh, as was I, and, you know, we were doing things and we were adding, we're like, you know, what can we do to increase our sales? And we try new things and and try adding this and adding that and 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 doing different things here. And we ended up with a flat result. And then the next year we, all right, well, let's try to do this and try to do that and try to do this. And we ended up with a flat result. And we did that for like three or four years. And I said, I, you know, I don't know. It's very disheartening after three or four years in a row, you're, you're trying to grow this business and we just, we just couldn't grow it. We couldn't, we couldn't, couldn't get results, yeah. um, you know, which included trying to get results and profit too. Sure. Yeah. Well, once, you know, we were in that economic downturn and once that thing kind of let loose, we were going, you know, 10, 15% increase that year. Then the next year was 20% increase and then another 15 or 20. And, and it's just been on a very upward trend, ever, you know, ever since then. And what we didn't realize at the time was trying to do all these new things. We were just, we were kind of molding our company or molding our business or molding our brands for what was upcoming. And we just, they, it, the, the, the market just hadn't said, okay, yet. Yeah. And then finally, once the market started, once people started, you know, got back into their houses and less foreclosures and everything else, and it took off, we were already, we were there, we were ready. We, we, we did all this new stuff. We had it all. And, yep. and we were just ready for that point in time. But I, I, I do remember back then, it's just, it was very disheartening, you know, trying to increase and we were just ending up with flat. Now, yeah. in hindsight, you were on the right path. When you talk to other people, they were like, you were flat back then? Yeah. Oh, God. We were like, we were way down. You know, we were coming, you know, and we never went down. We were we were li literally flat. I remember the old saying was flat is the new up. Flat's the new up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's exactly what we were doing. But it was just very, um, you know, very disheartening to, yeah. to be in that and and, and trying your damnedest to, to um to not be that, but we just, we could not get it to grow. We just couldn't. And uh, the market just wasn't ready. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's, most companies don't really like to put money into marketing or new strategies when things are going south as far as the economy is concerned. So kind of doubling down when, when the economy is going into the crapper, you know, you'd be able to, to, to double down and, and start investing in it. Obviously that paid on the other side. Real to your point, really tough to see it when it when it's happening and you're in in the soup. Uh, but obviously well, that paid off well. Hindsight's twenty twenty. When you're in it, it's uh, about twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> great point. Um, so if you look at the business overall, what do you think the end game is for you? What do you think? What would you like to see happen to the business? Go into generation four or something completely different? Yeah, you know what? You know, I don't know. Um, it was, uh, I was never forced. My brother and my sister were never forced to uh, come into the business. Um, I had a job here um, in high school and, or, or, you know, and through college or whenever I wanted. I had a job here if I wanted it. Right. Um, but uh, I, I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid as anything more than, you know, some green kid that, didn't didn't know anything yeah um, you're paid for your experience yeah <laughs> um, um so you know i had a job if i wanted it um i i mean i i knew that i wanted to come back and do this uh i grew up right here next to the nursery i had i had the biggest backyard of any kid ever had uh, <laughs> so uh i spent a lot of time in the backyard um but that being said you know, it's not, it's not the easiest industry. It's not, uh, I mean, most, um, 
most self-employed businesses aren't nine to five jobs, but this one's really not. Um, yeah. You know, in the springtime, there's a, uh, around a two month period that we're working a hundred hours plus. Wow. Um, we're putting, you know, we, we were talking about weather. I mean, we put a lot on the line. Uh, we're dealing with a perishable product. Um, a perishable product that can only be sold in a very small window. I mean, if you put the nursery business down on into a business plan and went <laughs> for money, they'd be like, you're out of your mind. Kid. No, way. <laughs> no way we'd ever do this for you. Right. Um, and somehow at the end of the year, you know, we make it work out. Yeah. Well, that's great. I don't know what's going to happen um, with the next generation. And um, we'll, we'll have to, uh, address that someday. Um, my brother has a 11 year old and an eight year old. Um, my daughter has a six year old and a three year old. Um, and, um, I have a, let's see, 11 year old and a six year old. Mm -hmm. Um, and the interesting thing is, is, uh, you know, there's, there's room in these businesses. You, you don't have to be a farmer. You don't have to want to get on a tractor. You don't have to um, you know, be good at growing plants to be in this, to be in this family business. Uh, right. There's lots of different attributes. There's sales, there's marketing, there's, um, you know, there's purchasing, there's, you know, there's office people, there's, um, there's tons of outside people. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, so far, um, I think we've only got one 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 farmer up and coming, which is which is my son. He's the only one that wants anything to do with trucks and tractors. And yeah, <laughs> um, six six years old, he he can run a backhoe, he can drive a tractor, he can do all that <laughs> stuff already. Um, you know, and and we'll we'll have to see. What, um, you know, it's just too early for us to know if that next generation is going to want to be involved or not. Yeah, lots can change, as Amy has, has a lot, proven. A, a lot, has, a lot can change, and you know, we we just won't know. Um, Bobby and Amy have we've all we've sat down, we've talked about it, you know, and we have agreed that you know, hey, there's jobs here for them, but you know, if they want to be an owner and they want to be a serious part of this, it's not for everybody, and, and they got and they have to know that they gotta, yeah they got to want it. Um, you know, we we won't we won't make that mistake. Yep. Well, that's great. So thank you so much uh, for your time today. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Don's business, check out their website at centertonnursery.com and be sure to support your local independent garden centers. Don, thanks again for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, sponsored by Rivers Edge Advisors. For more information on how Rivers Edge Advisors can help you, visit their website at riversedgeadvisors.com. If you'd like to connect with Brian Carney for business advice or just to share a beer, follow him on Instagram at riversedgeadvisors underscore LLC.